So hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, I am going to explain the most basic and fundamental data structure that is arrays. So in this video, I am going to cover the basics of arrays. And at the end of the video, I am going to share an interesting thing about arrays. So watch this video till the end. So let's start. So first of all, we need to understand what is an array. So the formal definition of an array goes like this. An array is a collection of similar items stored in contiguous memory location. So we know that arrays are the most basic and fundamental data structures, right? Other data structures like stacks and queues are derived from arrays. So as we can see that arrays are so prevalently used, it is generally the first data structure that students learn in an introductory CS course. So what is an array? Actually, you can think of an array as row of boxes where each and every box will be capable of storing some element. Let's say if you are storing an element in the box number one of that is of type integer, then all the boxes will be capable of storing integer data type element only and each and every box let's say is given some number let's say the first box goes by the number zero next box goes by the number one and so on so that is what an array actually means so over here i have taken an example over here you can see in this example the size of the array is equal to seven i have taken an array of size seven and the index is starts from zero and it goes till six so Generally, the range of the indexes is from 0 till size minus 1. So this is the range of the index 0 till size minus 1. And these are the values. So generally, you can think of an array as a mapping between values and indices. So while discussing the formal definition of an array, it was mentioned that contiguous memory allocation is done to an array. So what does it mean? So let's understand what is contiguous memory allocation. A single contiguous section or part of the memory is allocated to the array. You can think of an array as an apartment in an apartment complex where each and every apartment are adjacent to each other. And we know that each and every apartment will be given some number. Let's say the first apartment is given the number 1000 then the next apartment will be given 1001. So similar to that, each and every cell inside an array will be given contiguous memory allocation. So over here, I have taken one array in which the size of the array is equal to n. And over here, you can observe this is cell number zero, cell number one and cell number two. And we know that the size of integer is four bytes. Let's assume the data type of this array to be integer. So what will be the memory allocation for the cell number zero? So all the bytes starting from 1000 till 1003 will be allocated to the cell number zero. And now for the cell number one, the allocation of the bytes will start from 1004. You can observe that after 1003, the next byte was allocated to the next cell that is 1004 and till 1004 till 1007 will be allocated to the cell number one. Now for the cell number two, the upcoming byte will be present at 1008 memory address. So it will be allocated to cell number two and it will go till 1011. You can observe four bytes are being allocated to each and every cell. So that was what contiguous memory allocation means for an array. So now the bifurcation between an array can be done based on the memory allocation. So basically arrays are divided into static arrays and dynamic arrays based on the memory allocation. So what does it mean by static arrays? So it allocates the memory at compile time. And if the size of the array is fixed, you cannot change the size. You cannot increase the size or you cannot decrease the size in the future. Let's say you have declared, declared an array of size 10 then that array is a static array. You cannot change its size. And what is the other type? The other type is dynamic arrays. So dynamic arrays grow in size. Let's say if you have created an, a dynamic array and initially the capacity of the array is equal to 10. Now, if you want to insert 11th element, let's say you have populated the first array and all the 10 cells are completely filled. Now you want to insert the 11th element. So what will be happening in dynamic arrays? Array resizing will take place. That is an, a new completely array, which is double the size of previous one will be allocated and all the content of the previous one will be given to this new array and the 11th element will be attached at the end of this array. So this is what dynamic array mean. So now as we have learned the basics of arrays, now let's say if you are working in C, C++ or Java and if you want to declare an array, so how will you declare an array? So over here, let's say if you want to uh, declare an array in C or C++, the syntax for declaring an array goes like this. First of all, you write down the data type then you write down the name and inside the square brackets, you declare the size of that array. So now let's say if you want to declare an array in Java, 
as we know that c++ and java both of them are object oriented programming language but over here the syntax for declaring an array in java is little bit different from what is in c++ so over here in java the syntax goes goes like this first of all you write down the data type then you write down the name inside the square brackets over here you don't mention the size and now here comes the assignment operator and then you use the new keyword and then you write down the data type and now in this square bracket you write down the size so now let's say if you want to create an array that goes by the name arr and you want the size of that array to be 3 so now if you are uh, declaring that array in c++ the sint syntax will be integer arr and now let's say the size of that array was 3 so this is what declaration of an array in c or c++ looks like now let's say if you want to declare the same array in java you can write down in this manner integer then write down the name arr then you write down the assignment and then the new keyword and then you write down the integer data type and then inside the square brackets you will be writing down the size that is 3 so this is how you declare an array in this languages so now let's say if you have already declared an array and now we want to assign some elements to that array so how will you do that so for that inserting an element inside an array the syntax goes like this you write down the name you write down the index inside the square brackets and now you assign an element in this manner let's say if you have already created an array that goes by the name arr and these are the values which are already filled now let's say if you want to insert an element at index number five so how will you do that you write down the name and inside the square brackets you write down the index so index is equal to five and now let's say i want to insert 13 in at the index number five so this is how you write down the inserting an element part inside the array and at the index number five 13 will be inserted and now let's say if you want to print the content of an array you can iterate over the indexes and with the help of index you will be capable of accessing the element or the value stored at that index you can iterate over this range of index that is from 0 till size minus 1 and with the help of a for loop or a while loop you can do that and if you want to fetch the element at this specific index the syntax is array and then inside the square brackets you will be writing down the index and this will give you the value present at the ith index of an array so this is how you can insert and print the array elements so now in this part of the video i'll be discussing the interesting part about array so let's understand so if you are a little bit aware about time and space complexity you might have heard that if you want to access an element inside an array it takes constant amount of time right that is order of one so why does accessing an array element takes order of one so let's understand so over here for example i have taken an array with size equal to 6 and these are the values stored inside the array and i have mentioned the address of the first byte of each and every cell the first byte of the cell number 0 has address 100 the first byte of cell number 1 has the address 104 and so on so now let's say if you want to access the element at index number 2 you wrote down the code to access the element at index number 2 you wrote down array of 2 so what will the compiler do so compiler uses this kind of equation in order to reach at that specific address of that cell so if you want to find the address of the ith index the equation says that you need to add the offset to the base so what is the base address and what is the offset let's understand base address is nothing but the address of the 0 itself so over here in this case our base address is equal to 100 and now what is offset offset is nothing but the product of the index which you want to find i multiplied by the size of an element over here i have taken an array of integer data type so we know that the size of an integer is equal to 4 bytes so now let's say if i want to find the address of the index number 2 so what will the compiler do so compiler will write down the values inside this equation and it will calculate the address of the index number 2 so now let's say i want to find the address of the second index so what is the base address over there base address is 100 and what is the offset offset is the product of index multiplied by the size so 4 into 2 will be giving you 8 so 100 plus 8 will be 108 you can observe the address of the first byte of cell number 2 is 108 so in this manner the compiler can calculate the address of any ith index in constant amount of time hence accessing an array element is order of 1 so that was all about arrays if you really enjoyed this video and hit the like button and share it with your friends and to watch more content like this subscribe to our channel thank you